Aragon. Okay. Okay. He was the uh, Aragon was the first African American recording artist who successfully sued Columbia Records. He successfully sued, and this was in 1960. He successfully sued Columbia Records regarding his contract and his uh, his uh, his remunerations, and um, they paid it. And uh, you, you may not know his music, may not have ever heard it, but he's an ex exceptional musician. And then there was Ray Charles. Ray Charles was the first African-American artist who uh, owned his own masters. He owned his own recordings and masters. And so, and during the time that he wrote music, you know, for people to own their own masters was just not something that you know, music companies offer. And so that's an incredible capacity. In fact, Michael Jackson learned that capacity too. In fact, he learned that from Ray Charles that you need to own your own masters like that now, but he didn't earn it early. He didn't learn that early because when it came to Sony Records, Sony Records owned their masters of him sometime that way. And now another recipient that we recognize is Mr. August Wilson. August Wilson was a world-renowned uh, playwright, well-renowned, as a matter of fact, he must have had 15 plays that have been on Broadway or off Broadway. Brilliant play playwright. He, he died about seven years ago, uh, but a brilliant playwright. And then there's the first African-American woman who performed at Carnegie Hall. First African-American woman who performed at Carnegie Hall. I don't know her, uh, Gino Francesconi. Gino Francesconi. Uh, it wasn't a name that I remembered, but that's what the records indicate. And the first African-American woman who performed at the Super Bowl was Ella Fitzgerald in 1972. First African-American to perform at a Super Bowl. Uh, and she also performed at Carnegie Hall. Uh, and, and, uh, and the most sold out artist, now you're gonna, you're gonna love this, the most sold out artist at Carnegie Hall Chuck Berry, Chuck Berry. In June, June 17th, 1965, he ranked the first you know, sold out artist at Carnegie Hall. So those are 24, oh, you want more, but uh, I just, and there'll be something that we recognize. And I want you to understand what people had to go through to get to where they got to, so that you'll be inspired to continue to work, continue to do your best, continue to put your best foot forward, and continue to convey to other people that are watching you, I know uh, grace and elegance with power and strength. Grace and elegance with style and strength. A lot like the way Jim Brown used to run his uh, football touchdown. Okay, very good, very good, very, very good. Okay, so with that being said, we're moving on. And uh, now we want to hear from Mr. Grover Jackson. Tell us about your, your fundraising program. Uh, you know, did Claire, did you tell us about our efforts with uh, AKA? We so, we're so happy and we brag about it. And our help, helpers on the call here, uh, Nancy Core and Ernestine Wooten, who we were able to raise one help, we help, we help, we help. In one day, a million dollars for AKAs, a million dollars for AKAs for HBCUs. Two, two million, two million. Two million. Two million. That's right, two million because they well they continued it they continued it over two days, but two million dollars for HBCUs through AKA. Woo! 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 Now that's not what you said. Hoo! 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 Something to get excited about. Okay, okay, victories, victories. So, uh, young Floyd, uh, Grover, tell us, tell us, tell us about the program. Wait, let before. Nancy tell us the correct number. Okay. Nancy. Nancy or interesting, tell us the correct number. Two, two something it was, 218, I think. You're right, it was 2.1, yes. Uh -huh. 2.1, yay, okay. Wow. <laughs> all right, all right, okay. Okay, so now, um, all right. So we'll stop recording.